Like many, I used to dread Mondays. They've always been challenging, mostly because I tend to feel overwhelmed by my never-ending to-do list, thinking I never have enough time. Can you relate? That feeling of anxiety on Sunday nights, or I'd like to call it the Sunday scaries, dreading the week ahead was all too familiar. However, I've come to realize that this mindset was in itself counterproductive. It was setting a pessimistic tone for the entire week before it even began. Recently, I've learned to ease into Mondays with a slower, more intentional approach, setting myself up for a productive week ahead. Instead of rushing into my tasks and to-dos, I now take time to reflect, plan, and set realistic goals. In today's video, I'll share how my Monday mornings typically unfold, showcasing the routines and strategies that have helped me embrace the beginning of each week. And of course, I'll be showing you how our sponsor, Notion, plays a crucial role in this process. More on that later. But first, let's start by having a nice hearty breakfast and making coffee, of course. Sometimes I go for a bowl of oatmeal, but today's menu is peanut butter and banana and maple syrup on toast with filter coffee and a splash of milk. The new week always signals a new start for me and I always make it a point to refresh my space so I usually clean it and tidy up before I start any work for the week. I mostly work from my laptop with a monitor extension especially since a lot of my work is visual and I need a bigger screen to access it from. Most of my schedule starts off with writing what I remember in my planner, especially since I retain better memory when I'm writing by hand. Are you the same? I like to plan out meetings and workouts first and any social endeavors that have been pre-planned for the month. And then in between, I fit in my work hours, which maybe comprises like 70 or 80% of my week. And I try to sandwich that in between my personal errands and responsibilities that I have to do. As an adult, there are just a lot of life admin tasks that need to be done. So I try to factor that in every time I'm organizing my schedule. Right now, I've been enjoying how efficient planning with my plotter narrow has been. It's very compact and I have a weekly view that I use to write the key tasks and overview of what to expect and do for a designated week so I can just focus on that specific week and I don't have to think about the month ahead. And then eventually when I'm going through my day-to-day -day tasks, I switch to the grid pages to list down all of these to-dos in respective categories so I can orient myself accordingly and prioritize what needs to be done at a certain date and time. For me, managing deadlines on Notion has been crucial in keeping me accountable with my day-to-day -day tasks. While I'm inclined to an analog system, much of my project planning and collaborative work happens digitally through Notion. I work closely with a small team that comprises my video editor and project manager, and we've been using Notion diligently for about four years now. It's where we track content projects, log our meetings, jot down feature ideas, and store reference notes. Notion AI has been a game changer for me as a creator. It helps me stay on top of everything, from queuing up short form content to assisting my script writing for videos to logging my weekly deadlines on different platforms. I have Patreon, YouTube, and Instagram, and it's just easier for me to house everything on Notion. And through Notion AI, I'm able to work on every single platform and make sure that everything gets done. It's also a great tool for checking in on what needs to be finished for the week, making sure nothing slips through the cracks. For example, if I have a set deadline for a specific quarter or a specific timeline, it's just easy for me to ask Notion AI where I'm headed, how the projects have been going. And for me, it's not just a chatbot or a writing assistant. It's seamlessly integrated into my workspace, handling everything from idea generation to summarizing to task management. And it saves me a lot of time and keeps me on track. 
What I really appreciate as well is the privacy. Notion AI only surfaces information I have access to, and I know that my data stays secure. Notion never shares it for AI training purposes, keeping everything private and exclusive to me and my workspace. Now that we're all set, let's go through a couple of key tasks I need to kickstart the week. So it's mid-October and usually at this time, it's Q4, so it's quarter four, October, November, December 2024. I am in the thick of planning out content that specifically revolves around end-of-year videos and wrapping up the year, one of which is my annual planner and journal review video. When I make these review videos, I always prioritize the viewer's perspective and what they can get out of it, ensuring that the content provides valuable insights to help them make better decisions about the products being reviewed. I also center my approach on delivering a comprehensive analysis based on my own personal experience and judgment. I want to communicate this information in a way that is not only accessible but also engaging for my audience. So I want to be clear and I want to make it easy for them to understand what the video is all about. Time management has been increasingly important in my content creation process. I've also found that maintaining a video length of around like 20 minutes strikes the good balance between providing detailed information and also keeping the audience engaged. I don't want to keep yapping and like talking nonstop and realizing that like I've been talking for like 10 minutes and not having any like call to action or value that will be informative to whoever is watching the video. This time constraint was definitely a key factor and considered when I was using Notion AI for suggestions and guide questions so that I can keep it under this specific time limit. And it will also allow me to structure my content more efficiently. So I have actually uploaded a mid-year journal review already. So drawing my experience from that, I've incorporated the same systematic approach for this video. One adjustment I did though, based on the insights I gained from Notion AI, is that I used 2025 instead of 2024 in the title. Initially, I was like, oh yeah, 2024, planner and journal review. But then thinking about it, actually it makes more sense with search and also with the longevity of the video itself if I put 2025 because the reason I make these reviews is for people who want to consider choosing what 2025 planners or journals they would like to be using. It's a small change but it significantly enhances the video's long-term relevance and hopefully it will improve its searchability. So I wouldn't have thought about this if not for Notion AI and it really shows that the power of AI and content strategy offers a lot of perspectives that might not immediately come to mind when it comes to me thinking of these ideas with all of the processes that go behind making a specific video. For the next task on my list, I've begun organizing the Patreon mail for November. I'm designing a sticker sheet and I need to brainstorm words and key topic points for the drawings. Given that autumn is our theme, I turn to Notion AI for inspiration, asking it to suggest words and elements that would be relevant for my design process. So autumn is obviously one of my favorite seasons and it can be quite a broad theme. And I've explored it a lot in my work over the past years. I've made PT tapes, I've made washi tapes, I've made stickers, collage kits. A lot of graphics and a lot of art have been made about autumn. And I want to avoid repetition and of course bring fresh ideas to the table. So I attach some of my previous autumn theme works as reference points for Notion AI. This approach helps me build upon my already existing body of work while ensuring I bring something new and exciting to my Patreon members. 
The ideation and design process for these stickers typically spans a couple of days. I find that starting with rough ideas and gradually refining them into actual drawings is an effective approach for my process. It usually just begins with loose doodling. For me, it's a good way to warm up and get the juices flowing. These initial sketches are basically just like what the first thing comes to mind when I think about, I don't know, like autumn leaves or fountain pens. And then later on, I'll refine them and polish them during the illustration and coloring stages. One of the aspects I love about this part of the process also is that it allows me to visualize different design possibilities for the stickers. Should I have like round stickers, square stickers? Should I use a collage format? or maybe a mix of hand lettering and illustration would work better. Given the variety of creative outputs I produce with my work, there are numerous directions I could take, and it's always exciting to see how the final designs will evolve from these initial concepts. After this brainstorming session, I've completed a full page of doodles. So this is not yet final, obviously, but this page will serve as a valuable reference point later in the week when I transition to working on the illustrations using Procreate on my iPad. It's a crucial step in my workflow, and it ensures that the essence of my original ideas is preserved throughout the creative process. Lastly, I also come up with content ideas for Instagram at the start of the week just so I'm not worrying about it in the middle of the week and I can kind of establish when I would like to film these based on previously uploaded videos or content within the same theme. I've been trying a new system where it's like every month I have like keywords or certain themes that I follow so I'm not super all over the place with what I want to post on Instagram. I feel like with my content, there's a lot of things I like to talk about but I try to narrow it down specifically so I don't feel like I'm all over the place and obviously the algorithm doesn't like that. So what I do is I usually browse my feed and check some comments if there are suggestions or questions I can answer and then I prompt Notion AI to further look through my content calendar page for other keywords and select topics that would be relevant and useful for my process. Usually this is where me and my project manager dump ideas also on what we'd like to talk about with content, especially if we find some reels that are inspiring that we could also adapt and use for my specific niche, which is journaling. And I also find that instead of asking one of questions on Notion AI, I like to add on whatever what was was previously suggested so I can get an overall idea how I can build up the concepts and eventually narrow it down as I see fit. It's always tricky with content because at first you'll always think like, oh, this idea is enough. But also you have to kind of pare it down and consider like the length of the video, for example, for like a 30 second reel, you can't talk about 10 ideas all at the same time. So I try to organize it in a way that's more relevant to how I want the video to come out for example for the reel and then how it benefits like a previously uploaded youtube video or something that would complement an already existing post that i've had in some way it does help me strategize better and be smarter about the content that i share so the direction is also more finite in terms of what i need to film and or create for that specific week there's just too many ideas and i always like to refine it and keep asking Notion AI how I can fix it, how this specific prompt can be narrowed down from 10 prompts to five prompts. And these are just simple ways I incorporate Notion AI into my workflow because from there, I'm able to really decipher what works best in my own process and adapt it as I see fit. Usually when lunchtime rolls around and if I don't have a workout or any other plans, I like to sneak in a quick walk. I just want to go out, get some fresh air, and for me it's a great way to boost my mood and clear my head. Plus, it's a nice way to split my day in two so I'm all fired up to tackle the rest of my to-do list. It's like a little reset button on my brain just to cut off the first half of the day which required obviously a lot of thinking, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of idea generation, and it's just nice to get out. I actually had an emergency dental appointment this particular Monday, so I ran errands afterwards, which is always a good excuse to get some daily steps in. I picked up mail from my P.O. box, 
got a latte to go on the way back and it's just so lovely to walk at this time of year especially with the autumn leaves coming out the leaves have become yellow and brown and i can feel the crisp cold air as i take my walk while i've always been hesitant about colder weather i'm learning to appreciate the seasons as they come embracing the slower pace that this time of year brings I hope this gave you an insight into how I start my week. Thanks again to Notion for sponsoring this video and thank you so much for watching. Bye!